going doing who's here where are y'all from and what do y'all want to talk about tonight i got micro greens i've got stuff um this is what i'm going to get started in the garden let's see alan carter hey alan how are you doing you were here uh yesterday weren't you i saw you in here an advocate for library let's see advocate for liberty how are you doing and jeff i just saw you appreciate you coming in linda Jenkins, Mississippi. Cool. Awesome. Who else we got? Melissa Gray, South Carolina. Nice. How are y'all? How's the weather where y'all are at? We're, it's a little chilly here. I had a little space heater going, just turned it off because it got warm in here, but we're like up in the 70s. So, I mean, plants are growing good over here. Hudson, Florida. Hey, I'm in Florida too, Mama Bear. How are you liking this winter? I don't know if you're in North or, or South Florida. We had like a couple of days we're down near 30 and that was about it for this year so far we might get a cold snap i remember growing up uh in south georgia where albany is not too far from here it was like in april or, or very late march we had like an ice storm or something come through so vancouver let's see you're from vermont okay so you're up there you're you're really cold and you're cold <laughs> right or did it get there were some parts that got a little warm is it chilly 39 degrees 12 degrees no no not for me that's uh, i grew up I, I grew up in south florida miami it was you know christmas time we were running around in shorts and that and i think our houses we didn't even have um central heat or air you know everybody we build, we build houses i don't know if you guys are like that up here down there in uh, the states it's like unthinkable to think of uh, putting up a house without central heat and air but i grew up in one and uh down in miami we you know during the winter we just turned a little space heater a kerosene heater and i remember we were like kids we had to be careful running around because you touch it and burn your hands but that's all we had um so i'm not used to i moved up to georgia let's see i was in atlanta it's about the farthest north i've ever lived and it snowed there like once every eight years or something you know for one day that's like when you have little flurries and then the whole city shuts down because nobody knows how to drive on it they're all sliding around but so i've been down here i, I don't think i could stand uh 19 and 20 degrees where are you at 39 okay that's not 39 is not too bad i'm a bear tampa okay cool so you're a little farther south than me i'm, I'm up towards uh jacksonville but yeah, so I let a lot of stuff go. I don't know if y'all have been watching the channel. Good evening, Mike from Hudson, Florida. Awesome. Just cover up my eggplant. 42 for lows. Yeah. Yeah, a little, little, little chilly. My uh, Swiss shard, y'all saw that in some of the videos. Uh, that doesn't like the cold at all. So when it got down like around low 40s or high 30s, you know, they all, it was all limp and that uh, I forgot to cover it up. But, but those things, you know they come right back if we've got warm weather we can just like cut off those leaves and and new ones will pop up it's been doing, doing really good let's see new york you're you're cold jeff i know you are that's why you're growing all indoors right now right growing kale spinach lettuce in the downspouts awesome with master blend first time we're here and loving the system cool yeah um linda i'm glad glad you're liking it my hydroponics seem to be doing just fine awesome mama bear uh i love the system because it's like all right these are the microgreens right and you know i start i didn't even think about growing microgreens at first i i did like everyone else was you're going to plant a garden so it comes about this time of year and you start your seeds and you know we're always trying to guess when the last date of frost is when should we start planting seeds should we you know put our plants out or harder them off and there's all these things you have to think about and then you might plan early, try to get a jump and get a frost and it kills everything. Um, so I was like everyone else and I started growing in the downspouts. Then I heard about microgreens. So I started growing these to eat just for the nutrition. So I was growing microgreens and I needed transplants. And I was like, well, heck, you know, that's that's a little baby plant right there you know, with the roots. So I took that and just put that in the pool noodle because uh, when I started doing the crack key system, they were saying to get transplants like I'd get them from Home Depot. And they'd be well established you know wash off the roots like you've seen some of the other videos put those in real simple to do but then i thought well heck i've already got that why don't i try that there's like thousands of them there right 
So, you know, I put those all in there and that's what, if you guys have seen the last couple of videos where I had all those broccoli greens in the milk cart containers, it came from one of these. You can see where we start trimming, you know, somebody ate off of this one, probably my wife or my son. A spot about this big, it, that's all the plants we took and we planted out that entire thing. So that big thing, um, I got to go through the green screen to pop it back on here. But that screen you saw in the beginning with all those broccoli greens came from a little spot about that big. And this basically is like 10 grams, you know, of uh, seed. So with barely any money, you get like a ton of greens. So you can take these and plant them out, get them all out there. And then if we do get a cold snap and you forget about them or something happens and it dies and you've always got microgreens going, it will take you literally a couple of hours to go out and pull those out come back and yank a couple more of these and put those back in and you're back in business. So I love doing this because before you remember, you got all your seeds, your, all your starts and everything. And then, you know, something would happen and, and that would be your, your, your attempt for the year. You know, you try again or you might have to start all over and then it'd be too late to start seeds. This way, if you're using these, usually if you start your seeds off and they're this tiny and that, tender you usually don't yank them out and mess around with them right you would let them grow bigger and and get more established you wouldn't mess around with those but just pulling those off of here you know it doesn't damage them too much and then you put them inside the crack key system and and they take off so you usually wouldn't even mess with these so this is like seven to ten days old and you can already pop those off and put them in a, a downspout you know you plant them off in a, a container you're going to wait for them to get a lot bigger the roots to get established and I started pulling these out, you know, when I had small transplants. I don't know if you guys have ever looked into it. I, it was uh, bio-intensive gardening. I, looked, I, I tried a lot of stuff about eight years ago. That's why I found the hydroponics and crack key. I tried bio-intensive, uh, the square foot gardening, uh, Larry Hall's gutter gardening, the um, back to Eden with the mulch. Um, I, I tried all of it, and uh, and I took a little bit. Of different things to kind of make my system work so this is basically like biointensive gardening as you grow things start them off really dense then you go through and get the best ones out and you replant them and then you know it's like thin them out I was like well I'll plant them dense and then I'll just use these to use as my starts so you do that and you keep microgreens growing you can see like this one right here this one's ready to harvest right it's about 10 days old we we'll come in there and start harvesting that and this one over here, it's a little smaller. That one's about a week earlier. I mean, a week later. So what we did was, you know, we started this one about a week afterwards. I started that one. So this one's about five days old, maybe. And that way, when we harvest this one and we've got this one coming, when we're done with this one, I'll plant out another one. That way you've always got your greens coming. You don't have to worry about trimming them, putting them in an ice box, and then they get shoved to the back of the refrigerator and, then, and you know, they get all wilted. And you keep them coming and then that way whenever you need them in your garden you know in these things you've always got this going so if something happens you know some people will get like moth, cabbage moths or something to come through and beetles or ravage it or something you literally have to come in here pull them out switch out your nutrient solution and you've got these going pop them in you're back in business in a couple of minutes so i, I love doing that because we keep rotating stuff um i don't stress out you know when you start a traditional garden You've got so much space and you go, well, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. Um, sorry, about I forgot checking out the comments here. Hold on one second. The biggest complaint I have about Vermont is growing to, yeah, it's too short. When I see you growing outdoors in winter, yeah, yeah, it's just, I love, I love it here in Florida. Like I said, if, and I let things go because I thought, you know, usually we have like a little bit of a hard freeze and everything. Um, so I've got all the broccoli greens growing. I've got microgreens. And I've got stuff in the, remember we had that NFT system and the pump failed and I turned it into a crack key. I've got collard and kale still growing in there, broccoli and, and some strawberries. And I saw somebody ask something about strawberries. Don't forget, thumbs up. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, la, 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 la. I'm scrolling through the thing. Here we go. I tried crack key. I tried crack key strawberries, but they got sick looking when I refilled the water. Um, I'm, I'm just trying it for the first time too. And I had them in the, the downspout 
and maybe you maybe if they fill back up maybe the roots need to stay you know so much of the roots need to stay dry it, it might have to stay more uh constant um and i put them into a four inch remember my nft system my there it was made out of four inch sewer pipes the pvc pipe and that doesn't fill all the way up that only has about an inch or two of nutrients on the bottom and it's four inches wide so i never fill that back up so the roots maybe the roots that need to get down there and it leaves that air space it's like a big air gap and my next video i'll try to put a couple pictures of it i've got like three strawberry plants two of them are producing strawberries there's nothing right home about their you know average size strawberries and i probably got about a handful off of each one so I'm, I'm struggling with it too. I got a couple of them off though. The first, and those I started back before uh, the fall and the squirrels, the every, all the strawberries that I had on that started the first time, for some reason they got up there and, and ate all my freaking strawberries off. So uh, I'm trying again, but I'll, in one of my next videos, I'll, I'll put pictures of it in there. I left some. Let's see. You can't get drown plant if you feel it too high. Yeah, you can drown it if you do go too high. I left some room, but also added some bloom nutrients. Okay. Did you? I don't think Adam Bloom would do anything that usually. Let's see. Yeah, and then Jeff's doing a lot. If you check out Jeff's uh, channel, he's doing a lot of the cracky stuff too. And uh, yeah, you've got to leave like some of the roots. Some things. See lettuce if you do lettuce in this and that's why lettuce is a good crop to try um lettuce doesn't mind its roots being wet all the time and they actually do lettuce commercially when you buy hydroponic um, lettuce it's in a floating wrap system which is different from the crack key system basically it has a thin layer of uh, styrofoam that's got a hole cut in it and the plants in there roots are coming out the bottom basically like cracky but it floats on top of the nutrient solution so that styrofoam is right on top of the nutrient solution most of the roots are inside so the only roots that are getting air are just the ones that are you know as thick as the styrofoam is but basically that whole thing's sitting right on top of the water so that's why lettuce is good you know you all can try that because you can be off with your nutrient level a little bit it's not going to matter uh, basil you know if you just put the stem in the stem roots so it doesn't matter how much of that you put in there. Tomatoes, those are all excellent ones to try. But there's some other plants that need that, just that moist little air, and they, they don't need to have too much water on it. <clears throat> Let's see. Sorry if I'm getting a little hoarse. This is like the fourth live stream I've been through, and, and I've got different channels that, that I live stream onto, and now I've been talking like all day. I tested my tomato plants this summer, five gallon buckets, a few with the bubbler and a few without results were nearly exactly the same. Were they? Yeah, that's what I suspected. I, uh, lots of people say the aeration, you know, works better. I've seen, you know, varying results. Um, I do it without and, and they've been just fine. If you've seen, you know, the videos that I popped up, I, now I haven't grown any like beef steak tomatoes. I've grown a lot of Roma. Uh, the reason for that is some people grow them, but to me, it takes a lot longer and a lot more work goes into it and then when something goes wrong i'm even that much more distraught so if a, a cherry tomato grows really fast and i get a lot of tomatoes that's cool if, if not something happens i didn't put a lot of time in but if i'm sitting there growing like like a beefsteak tomato and it's getting big and i'm waiting on it and then something happens to it I, you know that that bothers me i put that much work into it so i grow cherry tomatoes and i grow roma tomatoes a little plum tomatoes Let's see. That's how I've been seeing them grown in Hawaii. Yep, yep. My plant's about six inches of space for the roots. Okay, in a five gallon bucket, six inches. Yeah. Hey, how are you doing, Chris? I see you uh, slip in here. Um, I saw you had, you got some downspouts for you or, or four inch pipes, PVC pipes, and you're going to set up four, six inch. I grew beef steak last year in the basement. Cool. How did it turn out, Jeff? Oh, never mind. I think I saw that. But yeah, y'all can grow it. Like I said, that you know, that's just preference for me. I'm impatient. I like to grow. You know, these are fast growing, and you know, I'm a little impatient when I put them out there. I don't want to 
you know, put a whole lot of time or sit there and wait a whole season. Some people garden and, and that's it. They wait until, you know, like growing a watermelon and then that's that's the harvest. Um, that's why I'm growing these greens is that, that I can grow them fast and I can keep eating. Uh, something happens to them, I can switch right over and just start over again. And then that way, you know, things are going to happen. You're going to have some pests or you're going to, you know, because we're doing it without, uh, um, what do you call it, pesticide and everything. You know, you're going to have some problems here or there. Uh, you might have a hailstorm, you know, the freak, you know, when you're not home and, and all of a sudden everything gets crushed, you know, things happen. And, and for you to be able to go over and, and the next day get started again, is just awesome. So, I, you know, I love it. You make it look so fun and easy. Appreciate it. I just ordered your half off sale. Awesome. Appreciate it. Um, yeah. If anybody's interested in that, let me see. I'll put a little thingy up here. Um, Around, let's see, when was it? Black Friday. I uh, did the buy one, get one free sale. And I got swamped with orders, which was great. You know, it was around Christmas and I get off for a little while and I got caught up. And right now we're heading into spring. And that's what, you know, got me thinking, you know, I got a little time off. I got a couple of weeks that I can work um, in my garden. And it's not quite ready to start planting everything out. So I got a lot of people DMing me or saying, oh, I missed this special. And, and a couple of you did order. If, if a couple of you did order just the one downspout, um, go ahead and, you know, just uh, DM me or something. I'll see what I can do. If I can get the uh, pick up the postage or something, I might just, you know, mail you a free one, you know, if you, you missed out on it. Because I'm going to have it again. I've got so many people asking for it. I figure I'll, I'll come back on this weekend tomorrow I might live stream a little bit too and then just give everybody the opportunity to to order like this weekend or the next couple of weeks when i'm off and i'll get those all built out and i think i'm going to get my sons to help me and i want as many people out there as possible who who want to give this a try to go ahead and try it um what do you call it i had there's there's people like my mom you know she she's okay she wants she'd like to grow basil grow some herbs and stuff uh but she want to go out there and get a power tool and, and, and drill a hole and, and heat then, you know, I, I used to help build houses. So that kind of stuff like is easy for me. And I forget that, you know, some people don't have a hole saw sitting around, you know, a hole saw is like 20 bucks or whatever. So, you know, you can borrow one or, or there's different things you can do, but, um, you know, lots of people want to grow some food, but they don't want to go through that process. So they're saying, can I just buy one? So that's why I've got that store open. And I really don't, I've never really, I don't advertise it. You know, I've always had it down in the description for like the last year, but I always get a lot of, you know, people asking about it. And uh, let me see, it makes it look so fun. So now that I've got a little bit of time, I figure I'd come on here, you know, go ahead and let, let people order. And I, I have fun because right now the weather is not really cold. You know, it's here in Florida. It's really pleasant outside and get out there and I can bust these out and make them. And if you guys order any of these downspouts and you use them and you grow something, uh, if you have a problem, go ahead and DM me or ask me, you know, I'll try to help you with it. Oh, that's something else I want to talk about. But if you grow something, you have fun, like lots of you guys in here are saying, you, you know, it's going good. You take pictures and stuff and share with the keep on growing group um, on Facebook or send me pictures and I want to start posting some pictures with y'all because I've been seeing some fascinating stuff because everyone doesn't do it just like I do. You know, this isn't the only way to do it. You can kind of learn from me. I learned from Dr. Kratke, which was like in one of my other videos. And I kind of tailor made it to, to work with me because we're all different and we live in different environments. You know, we have different humidities and we have different uh, times that the sun's out and we have different water. Uh, there, there's all kind of variables. So you have to do things a little different in your area. And they, they've been modifying themselves too and send me pictures and it, it's all been pretty cool. I really enjoy that. So um, if y'all do it, you know, send me some pictures. I love that. Um, one thing I was going to talk about was uh, everybody who's been buying the ebook, you know, it's like $4.99. I said you get, uh, what do you call it, um, updates or free. I'm going to be putting together my old pictures, uh, how I started and like experimented on the way and, and the pictures aren't real great because I had a crappy camera back then, but I'm going to get some of those together because I was looking over them. It's kind of fascinating and uh, go ahead and just put those somewhere in a Dropbox where y'all can go and take a look at it and kind of see where, you know, how, how I started all of this. 
But um, if anybody purchased the ebook and you've got questions, I'm giving away, I think I got it on here, a uh, free face call. FaceTime, it's a uh, face to face, kind of like this. Have you guys, I'm in a creative group, you know, we're YouTube uh, creators, and I keep thinking that everybody knows about live streaming and that. But have you guys seen anybody live stream where they come on like this and then they have, you know, somebody else come on with them? Let's see. I found a foreign thing tomorrow. Cool. Awesome. I've learned a lot watching channel. Cool. I always thought hydroponics would only work with fence setups. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's what I I thought, you know, um, um, I started doing it and I was excited. I wanted to get started. Then I read about all the stuff. I went to the hydro shop. And I was like, oh my God, you know, I can spend five, six hundred dollars. I can go over a thousand dollars, you know, to get started. And I was trying to grow some lettuce. You know, at that time I was trying to do it to, to save my family some money. Um, so I had to figure something out. And when I found, you know, Dr. Cracky's method, you know, that was pretty cool. But uh, let me grab my phone here. I want to show you all something. So People who purchased the ebook, what I was going to do was have a face to face consultation with them. You know, this is live. You don't have to do it live, but we can do we can do this. Uh, what do you call it in private? I'm going to show you how easy it is. And this is what we've done because some of you, Jeff, we, we went through this uh, and some of you have seen me do like an interview on here. This new software, this right here, StreamYard, it's got the capability that people can call in with the phone. And all I have to do is, you guys probably won't see this if I if share the screen. It's not going to be too too exciting or whatever. But all I'm doing is it's got a little invite thing. And I do Gmail. And I just send out an email. Now, you guys here in the chat, if anybody wants to jump on here, you know, just let me know. Say, hey, I want to, you know, I want to come on and say, hey, give me one second. I'm sending my, what I'm doing right now is I'm opening up my email. And I'm just sending myself a link to my phone. And it's that quick. All right. So what I did was I sent myself a link to my phone. Like I said, if any of you wanted to join, what I could do is just copy a link and I put, put it in the chat and you could click on that. So if any of you want to do this, just let me know. And you can click on it and you I can actually pull you up here on the screen with me. I'll actually be on this side and you'll be over there. And we can talk. But what's going to happen is the people who order my ebook, you're going to get a 15 minute or 30 minute. Where, and if I'm not doing anything, I'll talk longer. If you want to talk face to face with me, you've got questions. You go ahead and, and I'll set you up a link like that. We'll show you how quick this is. And what you can do. Is call in and then you can take your phone and either we can just talk face to face or you can take your phone out to your garden or out to your space where you're thinking about starting and saying, hey, how do you think this is? Or let me get this started here. All right. I sent it an email, right? So I just pop on email. I'm going to mute the audio on this because we'll get feedback for so close. And it just pops up a little thing like that. You just enter broadcast says you're backstage. Let me see. I might be on the wrong email. Oh, this was, I was just uh, doing this on the creator spotlight show, which was my other channel lottery of life. Oh, one second. But I said it was easy and I went and joined the wrong one. One second. I've got a bunch on here. So it says join StreamYard. Just click on the link. Bad, bad boys. Hey, Jeannie, how are you doing? I'm just showing people how they can call in. Like I said, if you guys want to call in and just talk or ask a question, you can do it. In our broadcast, it says popped in. Now watch this. And I just, and I just you, guys. you guys in. Turn off the audio. And flip the screen around. My garden is under the snow. Oh no. That's what I said. I'm not all up for that. 
see, so now I've got, you know, this phone I just called in on. So if you guys, like I said, people who buy my ebook, if they want like, to do a bank shot, I'll let you send that link. You just click it, and then we can talk back and forth. But if you just want to do audio only, you can just do like that. And you can just come on and just do audio only. You don't have to do face-to-face if you don't want Or we can just call them on the phone. You know, I, I just want to do that because a lot of people have questions. And I keep up through email and answer the same thing over and over and over. And it'd be like, well, I get to talk with you all. Make sure all your work up. Yeah, that's what I've got to do because I'm so close to getting feedback. But let me show you real quick so you can put this around. And then you can walk around your dog for this and say, or, you know, say, hey, what's going on with my microgreens? Okay, is that better? The audio, you the audio pick up. Yeah, this is good feedback. One second. Not better. Right, I'm going to pop up. Right, now any better? I'm doing great. I just came in from picking spinach. I'm adding it to the indoor raised garden, bok choy, tomatoes, onions, Swiss chard, salad. Wow, that sounds cool. Awesome. All right. Uh, Y'all give me a thumbs up? No? All right, I'm going to leave for a second, and I'll be right back in. All right, how's that? Thumbs up, thumbs down. I see thumbs down still. Let me know if you can hear that now. Testing. All right, that looks like that's working. How's that, guys? All right, testing. Anybody hear me? Better now. Okay, cool. Yeah, it, it being so close to the computer was getting a feedback loop going on and it screwed everything up. All right, better. Cool. So where where were we? Let's see. Jeannie said she's growing. She came in. She's picked spinach. Uh, what else you got? Radish, bok choy, Swiss chard, onions. Wow, you got a whole salad going on there. Awesome. Cool. Appreciate it, guys. Sorry about that. Like I said, it's you. usually I don't turn it on that close. So if, if you call, you'll be somewhere else. You won't get that feedback. But basically, that's what I'm going to do. If you guys think that's a cool idea, you know, some people, yeah, some, lots of you guys have been around here a while, but there's some people are new. And, you know, every time YouTube puts out a video, you always get like new people that just see it. And then they'll go get the book and they have a bunch of questions. So I, I was thinking of putting that in there and, and that way they're new. I can kind of welcome them and then talk a little bit. And if they have any questions, because um, I want to make this a little more interactive where we kind of get to know each other. It's, a, you know, when you watch some channels and they're like big channels, uh, you ask a question, you don't really get to interact with them. Uh, or, you know, you're trying to learn and you're like, well, I wish that, you know, I, I know this, you know, I just need to know a couple of little things. Uh, I just want to get a little more personal with, with some people in that. So, 
uh, I'm going to take a little bit of my free time that I have and start doing that with uh, some. And, and then, like I said, if anybody, you know, just DM me, if you want to come on the show and you want to talk about your garden and you can call in like that and you can walk around and show off your garden with your phone and it won't break up like that uh, because you'll be farther away, but you, you can walk around and uh, show off your garden like that. I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, let's see chat okay so everybody just give me thumbs up thumbs up so thinking jeopardy music yeah i could put that on that was me all right y'all let me know if i miss anything in the chat let's see that that not much garden garden more than me to talk about right now okay waiting for the spring yeah i hope i hope y'all get a good spring don't forget thumbs up yeah if y'all could thumbs up in that uh what do you call it? Let me talk about these uh, um, microgreens real quick. Like I said, so, you know, I was uh, just, just popping on to tell people about that special, but I hope it don't sound too salesy. But, you know, if we make a little bit of money that helps us buy more stuff and then we can make more videos, you know, it's it's not cheap with the cameras and lights and, and doing all of that stuff. So it just helps me out a little bit. So anything that you guys do to support, I so much appreciate it. So, like I said, I don't ask a whole lot. So when I do these, I hope I don't come off too like I'm a salesperson or something, but, you know, it, it helps out a little bit. And anybody that's, you know, like right now we're having a live stream and there's like a little super chat button. If you do that, it pops up in the chat and I can say thank you. There's an applause button if people are on their uh, desktop and it's a beta, it's being tested. So YouTube, sometimes it's on there, sometimes it's not. So I hate to tell people to use it um, if they want to, you know, help support the channel. But YouTube says, hey, you know, try to, you know, ask people. They want to see how it works because they're going to roll it out to all the channels. So sooner or later, when you watch all the channels down there by the thumbs up and thumbs down, there's going to be a little applaud button. And it's on your uh, desktop. Sooner or later, it's going to be on the phones, too. But I'm like in the experimental stage. So it's not there all the time. So I feel kind of weird. You know, they're like, well, how's it going? They want feedback. I'm like, well, it's not there all the time. I hate to tell people, you know, to do it. And then I don't get a any kind of notification like if you do a super chat your name comes up with that and say hey thanks you know for that but all the people i just wanted to reach out if like i said in my community post that if you did that and i don't know who's doing that and who's not so i want to say thank you but i don't know who to thank so i just want to just say you know thank you to everyone because it's i have no idea who it is so you know if anybody's used a little pause button i just want to say thank you that means the world to me and i wish there was some way that i could know you know who it is so i could yell out your name in that but I, but i really can't so uh i i really do appreciate you guys um let's see these microgreens like i said somebody out there this is why i like experimenting with all of you guys too and you guys are trying out different things um you remember i said i was growing these and that i have my wick going up one side and down the other side and it was leaving a little spot like this one Tell me if you can tell the difference. This one's kind of grown in. But see how it's kind of lower in the middle here? And if this keeps growing like this, these ends will start getting bigger because these are starting to pull up all this liquid. Let me get this downspout thing off of here. Hold on one second. I'm new at all this. There we go. Where's this banner thing? There we go. All right, is that better? A super chat. Appreciate that, Jeff. Awesome. Yeah, see, so when that happens, I say, Jeff, appreciate it. Thank you. And Jeff grows just like me, a bunch of hydroponics and everything. Y'all don't know Jeff, go check out his channel. Um, he's doing all the cracky method and he's growing indoors. So all you guys that are up north too, and you're growing indoors, um, check him out. I'm using Brad. Uh, from uh, Hidden Harvest Grow Lights. And I think he's got one of those and he uses some other lights and he does videos, so check him out. But appreciate that, Jeff. But uh, yeah, see when that happens, I can say thank you and I like that. And then that's the only thing I don't, I, I appreciate having that button. And that's not here when you're watching the live stream. I forgot to tell you, that's when you watch a video, which that kind of helps because people can help you out during the live streams. But when you go to a, a regular video, you can't leave a super chat on a video. So that's what the applaud button's for is when you watch watch a regular video, not the live chat like this. So if you've watched my videos, 
you know, and you, you did that, you know, thank you. That that's why I said it's, it's kind of weird because you're, you're getting donations and like that, or, or, you know, a little bit of support and you don't, you don't have any way to thank your viewers for it. So I think YouTube kind of has to fix that a little bit so that we, we have some way to, you know, say thank you. Um, Thanks to you and CB's green. Yeah, CB's great. And uh, Renee, I'm getting ready to start up my Dutch bucket system for the first time. Oh, awesome. That'd be cool. I'd like to try that too. Um, but uh, like I said, I'm trying to show people like the easiest way. That's a little bit, that's like the next step up. And uh, let us let us see uh, pictures and all that too. I want to see how that goes. Never did a super chat. Oh, cool. First time, Jeff. Awesome. Starting seeds used to be a pain. Now with your message. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Appreciate that. Uh, Advocate for Liberty. What's your name? If you don't, I mean, if you don't mind, some people don't want people knowing their name, but I just keeps calling you Advocate. But uh, yeah, this is cool. Uh, what was I talking about? This little dip here in the middle, because now this starts to grow. So these guys start to suck up more water. So this will keep growing here. And these basically will not get any more moisture or nutrients and be, you know, a little dip in the middle there. In one of my other videos, I said that somebody said, well, you know, this wick, see it runs up one side over here and then down the other side. They said, why don't you cut three slots in there and run the wick up and down and up and down and put two paper towels in. I was like, well, that's smart. I don't know why I didn't think of that, but that's why, you know, we're all experimenting together, right? That's going to actually, this actually going to be my next video or whatever I'd like film for that. So you guys are watching, you don't have to watch that video when it comes out because that's what I'm talking about. Unless you're the one that gave me that idea. I forgot who it was. If you were, thank you. But uh, see, this is the other one that's growing. Let me pop it up. You can see I've got three wicks. And all that is is I cut three slots. I did one coming up here and down and then ran another one with that and came down this side. So now moisture comes up there. And if you notice, this one's rounded off. You saw the other ones dip down in the middle. So I'm going to let that one keep growing. I left that one like that because I wanted like a comparison. That's what, what I'm doing a video to show you all. But that wasn't my idea. That was, you know, I was growing them like that. And it never, you know, sometimes you're too close to it. And you don't, you know, you're like, you know, thinking about everything else. And I couldn't figure it out. I was like, well, you know, what am I going to do with this? You know, maybe not plant, maybe just plant two rows or something. Somebody's like, hey, you big dummy. Why don't you just cut another slot and do that. And I did that and it worked. So, you know, uh, that, that helps, uh, that helped me. I never would have thought of that, you know, maybe down the road or something, but they said that and I was like, you know, well, hell, why didn't I think of that? And I went and cut them and the next crop I grew, they all came out rounded off. So thank you, whoever that was. Uh, I'd have to go back through, I've got a hundred videos. I can't, you know, it's one of the more recent ones, but I have to go back through hundreds of thousands of comments to uh, see who it was. And it might've been in an email or DM or something somewhere, but if it was you, thank you. And, and chime up and let us know. Cause you deserve a little credit. Cause I didn't think of that, but that, that helped all my crops. I did them all like that. Now this, like y'all were saying, this is like a carefree system. Really? You can tell that this is a little green. There's a little algae in there. This one's about ready, you know, to go ahead and hit the trash, right? Because we're going to harvest it. But that's just your cheap paper towel, your regular paper towel. If you get like the heavy duty one or the shop towels I was using, it'll last longer. That's just your regular paper towel. And you put that in there, um, planting the seeds. You all watched all the videos, right? And I uh, just spritz the top of the ramen cover, you know, a little black cover, covered it up. Now, I was home, you know, if you need to leave, I've left these before, you know, I, I did that after three or four days when they sprout, I pull the lid off and then I just leave it. If you're home and you got a little spray bottle, you come in there and miss it because you've got a, uh, usually it, mine has a little fan blowing on it. So it dry it out. Um, you can go in and spritz it a little. I do that when I'm home. And there's been times when I had to go out of town and I started growing these and I just left out of town and came back and was like, if it's there, it's there. If not. You know, I came back and it's, it's grown. So these, I didn't do anything to them. This morning, I did add a little bit more water. This one was down about almost almost out. So I used almost this whole thing. So this is what you can get. Like I said, you put it in there, set it, forget it. I don't know if you guys have tried to grow um, 
microgreens the traditional way, that's fine. If you watch the who was on the grow, the one the the channel that I was reviewing, if you guys it's in the description or uh, down in the channel, if you're on my channel, um, just a couple videos ago, they're fantastic little couple. I love them. Um, but you know, doing the the microgreens like that, if you're home and you're taking care of it, fantastic way to grow. If you watch Pepe Fossos, he's made a business out of it. Um, how many of you guys know Pepe? I've been using shop towels, even bought the Dremel cutting tool. You said, awesome, cool, appreciate it. Yeah, those shop towels work great too because they're tougher. And when you go to pull them through the slots, you know, like the cheap paper towels, you got to be careful, you know, not to like rip them. Those shop towels just pull through there, last a long time. Uh, if you, I started using chamois because I thought, you know, what's going to wick up? And I bought wicks. Um, I actually bought wicking material, cotton, 100% cotton that they use for like oil lamps. And that's how I started. And I ran a couple of those up. I got to get all this documented for y'all. Um, and then I was like, what else absorbs the water like that? And it was like a chamois. So I cut a chamois up and that worked good. That just sucked water right up. And then I got somebody saying, oh, that's synthetic and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, but this plastic container, you know, but they're worried about the chamois. So I went ahead and said, well, I'll use a paper towel or whatever. You know, I always try to go ahead and try to um, uh, accommodate everyone. And that's why I said everything that I do is not the only way to do it. It's just I'm trying to show everybody that, you know, that we can all adapt and, and experiment and then find something that works for, for what we do and what's going to work for us. Uh, so um, I use the, the chamois, but these, these paper towels, if I'm just going to grow this to this size, works fine. These peas, now these need to be harvested. And if I'm going to leave it any longer, I would have put like a uh, cotton um, terry cloth, you know, like the painter's terry cloth, the ones that are 100% cotton. Sometimes I go find an old t-shirt and just cut a t-shirt and put it up through there and it lasts a lot longer. But, oh yeah, by the way, I've got those peas. It's like as big as my head. When they get that big, then I can take them like that, tie a little string around it. Did y'all see me in my other video where I did that? And then I get my electric knife. And just cut all of them at once and then have them this way if you don't mind them getting all jumbled up you can just cut and throw them in but when you're cooking if you're like you know i used to be a cook we used to cater and make fancy dishes we like to have all of the you know the pea sprouts you know like that and can you see the little tendrils and that up on top that's what chefs like is just that looks kind of cool so they they want all of those and they'll take them and line them up they don't you know, sometimes I just put a little pile and make a little uh, salad, but they like to take that and line them up. So when I harvest them, I like to take it like that, cut it, and then when I put it on a plate, it looks nice and neat. These I don't really care about, but look, I've got sunflowers going too. Here's where we've been eating off of it. But this is what's great about growing stuff like this. I use these small containers. If you eat a lot of microgreens and you get a big family, the 10 by 20 trays work great. I watch Pepe and CB. Yeah, cool. The Pepe is awesome. If you watch him, this he's made into a business. Um, if I could go through all the rules and regulations of selling and, and trying to set up with everyone, and I, wa and I watch Pepe start from the very beginning and getting to know people and, and making connections. It's been fascinating, but he had a big hog barn went cleaned it all out tore stuff down finished the roof and it's all made it, he's he's turned the whole thing into growing microgreens if you all check out his channel and hook up with him on a um instagram he posts stuff over there every day it just looks fantastic it's all these different microgreens and and he, he sells them to chefs it's high-end chefs that are making stuff with it fantastic channel i love it two good channels yet yeah. i just wish i could find them green can yeah so I'm still eating that pea shoot. Um, that's the thing. Look how wore out that cup is. <laughs> I started this, you know, like I sell the downspouts to people. I was selling these too because people like, you know, they didn't want to get the Dremel tool. This is some people just want to pay 15 bucks or 20 bucks or something and get, get some stuff and, and grow. And they don't want to, you know, get their hands dirty actually, uh, building a container so i was going to the dollar store when i first started i bought all the green containers and there's like five dollar trees around me 
I bought all the green containers and I was using them and making videos and people wanted them. So I was selling them some and some people just wanted to order the green container from me. And then I was ordering them from the Dollar Tree in bulk. The only thing is when you bought it in bulk, you couldn't choose the color. So I buy a whole box, 24, eight of them would be green, then eight of them would be blue or blue or red or whatever other color. And people didn't really like those. And the green ones look really nice. I've still got maybe five, five to eight of the original ones left. But then they stopped selling the Dollar Tree. Then they started selling black and red and like some off colors that look, you know, don't look as good to me. So I, I don't even sell those anymore. And I used to tell people to go to the Dollar Tree and get it. Now when they try to order it, they can't get that color. So it really bums me out. But I'm going to make a video about that coming up in the future. If I get talking too fast, y'all let me know. What do the sunflower microgreens taste like? Um, I'll tell you in a minute. Um, but I'm going to do a video about the containers because pe people stress out about it a little too. But if you walk down the aisle in the store, especially Dollar Tree, and you walk into where all the um, Tupperware and everything are, you know, when I look down there, I, I just see all these containers and I'm thinking like, you know, all the different things I could, you know, ways I could grow it in that. And I kind of try to keep things consistent because I'm doing a channel. You know, you do videos. You guys seen it. If I come on here and I have some little odd containers, you really don't care, right? I, I think you don't. But if somebody new stops on, they don't take you serious. You know, it looks like you, you know, you just started something. So I kind of keep it looking a little kind of professional. But when I go down that aisle, I'm looking at all these, these different containers and, and going, wow, something would grow good in that or that or that. So I'm going to get a bunch of different ones one time and kind of show people that they don't have to stress out about it and how you can kind of decorate them too. I'm lucky my wife's an artist. She could actually just paint these all to look nice if she had the time. But uh, um, don't stress out about the container too much, uh, you know, unless you just, you know, you're going to have them sitting out where everyone can see it and you want it to look nice. Uh, you can grow in just about anything. Like I use almond brace containers. But yeah, if you guys haven't tried sunflower sprouts, you've got to try this. Uh, these are fantastic because everything else, like basically like this is, um, you know, it's broccoli, but it's, see, there's a little roots and that's all we do, you know, to stick in the container, but it's a little tiny, you know, broccoli leaf. And it, it just has a little bit, a little bit of flavor, not really reminiscent of broccoli, but, you know, just kind of a green kind of taste. Um, Basically, that if mustard is going to be a little spicy, but that kale, um, collards, most of those when they're about this stage, really, if you throw a bunch of them together, you can, can't hardly tell the difference between all of them. But sunflowers, you can tell the difference. I really need to get more into keeping a constant crop of microgreens. Yeah, my biggest issue is humidity control. Yeah, humidity. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, who asked? Jeff asked about the sunflowers. This right here, let me pop one off here. This starts to grow. Those two big leaves right there, that's what used to be a sunflower seed. So you, you plant that, you know, it's in the shell, pops up. You see a little hole on there. A couple of these still have the hole on it. See it right there. So it grows with the hole and it pops, you know, that falls off. So that was the actual sunflower. And it tastes like a sunflower seed, just a little bigger. It's a little green. It's got a little bit of a green flavor, but it's got a real distinct flavor. And that is really good right there. And if you can see right there, the little tiny leaves, that's the first true leaves coming through. Excuse me for eating, but I can't resist that. Let me show you another one here. This one here is too big. This is ready to harvest, so that's why you can see, you know, everybody's been eating off of it. We're going to finish that off. I got some more seeds soaking right now. So what you do is you're eating this. Your seeds are soaking. They're starting to sprout. Take this outside. Dump it out. Put your little fresh soil on. Dump your other seeds on. I put a little fine thing of vermiculite over it. We'll talk about that in a video. And you're back in business again. So these, you don't want to get too much bigger. You know, these, you don't want to get too much bigger either. But see that one right there? 
actually kind of leading. That was the that was the sunflower seed right there, and this is the first true set of leaves. Now the sunflower leaves are a little furry. If you're here, you can feel that. It's all furry, and it has a little different flavor. It's like a leaf, like some other plant, but it doesn't taste all that good, and it's got a real weird texture. Some people eat it. I don't like it. So before it gets to that stage, I want to stop. So if I want to eat that, if I pull that off, you know, I would take those off and not actually eat those because it's not real pleasant. But those are good. You put some, get your favorite kind of like little dressing like oil and vinegar, or we just use a little like lemon and vinegar, a little uh, sometimes garlic, different things, and you dip it in there. Or you put a little pile and um, drizzle a little dressing on there. That's awesome. Um, drop those into your salads. But really, that's all you want to eat. These leaves aren't that good. So right now, you can see, I don't know if y'all can tell, see right there, like first true leaves are starting to pop out right there. So what I would do right now to stop this from growing is take those, trim these down, put them in an ice box, and they'll stay fresh for about a week. I've had these stay almost two weeks in the refrigerator. So these, are, these need to be harvested unless you don't mind eating the true leaves. But like I said, I don't like that fuzzy texture. Um, I don't know about y'all. Do you y'all know it too? Do you like that? Uh, let's see. Welcome to Florida humidity. Yeah, good deal, Mike. Okay, I bought sunflower seeds, but have not planted them yet. Yeah, I plan to taste test microgreens, but plan to plant a few more seeds for future grows. Okay, yeah, I love some. So, and my wife loves them too. There's my wife right there. Um, Keely, sunflower sprouts, yummy. But yeah, the humidity. I've got a fan right now. I've got a wire rack, and I'll show that. Y'all can see my other videos. I got a wire rack. I just got the bubble insulation, that real flat. It comes in a roll at Home Depot. It's insulation. I wrapped it around the top and sides of my wire rack, and I put the lights in it, and I put a little fan on there. So I got the fan constantly blowing because it's just really uh humid hey there's pepe right now pepe we've been talking about you sunflowers the queen of the microgreens yeah they are we're just talking about eating eating those but uh y'all know pepe and if not y'all go follow his channel we're talking about you and your instagram um 560 farms i always get that number mixed up i know it's on 560 farms something like that but uh we're talking about your whole shit and how you got it decked out and and you've actually made it a business out of growing microgreens. And I know Keely knows you. Advocate, I don't know, do you do you know uh Pepe Fossils? I just learned something I haven't known when to use some flower microgreens without that info. Cool. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, you might want to eat them like that, but I don't care for that little fuzzy texture. So when they get about that stage, I come and then these you don't want those to grow too much more than that. That's actually too much. I should have harvested this like two days ago, but I wanted to show you all in the live stream, so I let it go. But you want to get the top parts here. It starts to get a little woody down there. But like I said, I like this because I can just tie it up like that and run my electric knife under it, and then I've got them in a bunch. So that's pretty cool. And you can always come in here and just take the top part. But I love I love pea shoots. The so pea shoots and the sunflower sprouts we grow those a lot but uh those cost a little bit more the seeds are a lot bigger and it costs a little bit more like this broccoli stuff this was only about like 10 grams of seeds and you get about 45 of those in a bag i think like a pound or, or some ungodly amount all of the that whole thing of broccoli sprouts the greens that you see me growing in that that video with all those milk containers i put like 60 of them together came from a little spot out of one of these and you grew that many greens. So you imagine how many of that whole bag you could have, like, you know, your whole yard full of them. Um, my ears told me. Oh, you heard your ears were burning. You knew we were talking about you. Hippie fairy dust. Nutrition. Yeah, nutritional yeast. Anybody else try that? I love that stuff. Uh, I have two of the exact same rack and several LED grow lights. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, those racks. I really should pick up reflective insulation. Yeah, I do that because I keep it in the kitchen. And uh, Brad was kind enough to send me one of his lights. And that 
is kind of like a regular, you know, it looks like a, a regular light, even though it's LED full spectrum uh, LED light. But I had grow lights in there before it was purple and I had it in my kitchen. So it looked like a friggin' disco in there. So I, I wrapped it with insulation, kind of kept it, you know, a little warm uh, with the lights in there. And then I put the fan on it. It works well. And then it's only like four steps away from our kitchen. So when we're cooking, we just run over, you know, cut some microgreens, go back, toss it in there, you know, rinse them off a little. But, hey, I'm Papa. You remember how we t I did the phone and all that? If anybody does want to pop on here, I'll go ahead and copy the clipboard. Pop a link in the chat. And if anybody wants to jump on, they can. I'm not, you know, no pressure. Nobody has to. But like I said, if anybody wants to jump up here and talk about anything, uh, feel free. And you can kind of test that out. Um, I don't do much of that on this channel. But I have another one where we're a bunch of creators, like, you know, we're YouTube creators. And we have another channel where you to get together and pop on and, and, and talk about everything, all things YouTube. But if anybody wanted to, all you do is just kind of click on that. And then it asks you if you want to join, and then you'll be in the back room, and I just pop you up. I got the purple LED disco lights. Yeah, that's what I had. And it was so I'd, I'd go into the – and then especially at night when it started getting dark, when we didn't turn it off, you know, for, you know, full like eight hours or whatever, um, our, the neighbors would look in, you know, in our, our kitchen, the lights coming out from our kitchen, you know, it would be dark outside, and this big purple glow would be going outside. So I kind of put the insulation all around. I kind of kept it contained. But now Brad's lights, full spectrum, but it, it just looks like regular light. So when I have it on, it just looks like a little night light. All right. Let me know if I missed anybody's questions, too, because this, like I said, when I get to run in my mouth, this kind of the chat goes by, and I know that I probably missed somebody somewhere. But, yeah. So if you guys got any questions, like I said, I was just talking about it. I've got springs coming up. Uh, I've got a little bit of time, and I'm letting the garden like stuff go. The those broccoli greens that we had in all those containers, you guys saw how big those got, and we're harvesting some off of them. We're not eating them all because I don't cut them down to like cook them down. We just take them, and put them in our juice or salads. So we're going through those, um, and I let that go. I told y'all I would just not water it. I wanted I wanted to see how long it would go before it would just without any care, and just kind of just die off. So we're harvesting them in the meantime, but I'm not refilling them. They're like floating around now. There's about that much nutrient solution left in them. And one or two of them have dried up, but there's still a bunch of them in there. But I'm letting it go, and I'm kind of filming along the way so that everyone can see, you know, if you can do that, that easy with no care, then if you're there to give it a little bit of care and fill up a little bit of nutrients and, a, you know, go through and care, then you could get even a better harvest than that. So I'm, I'm trying to show like one extreme to the other. So I have that and I'm just letting that go right now. And everything in my downspouts, I had pak choy. I let everything go to seed. And you know how stuff looks when it goes to seed, right? Brandon, how are you doing? That is the Facebook group. Oh, cool. Appreciate appreciate that, Jeff. Yeah, if you all aren't in the Facebook group, jump over there because you can ask questions. Everybody helps each other out. And you can share pictures of everything that you all are doing. Share them with the other people. They all love that too. Brandon was just telling my girlfriend to watch you. Awesome. She has like a garden in our room. Oh, do you? And she needs to learn how to grow outside. Do you have tutorials? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Check out my channel. Now, what I'm doing, Brandon, is called off-grid hydroponics, like cracky method. It's hydroponics, but we don't worry about pumps and aeration. There, there's a big learning curve and a bunch of money that has to go into it. Kind of like you're running your business, right? You're doing the... Um, um, the vinyl cutting that and then doing merch you kind of had to like put a bunch of money up front to, to get equipment right to get started hydroponics is the same way you can't just go hey i want to try and grow hydroponics tomorrow you got to go out and they, they show you all these different things you need to get you need to get you know meters and and uh, all these different nutrients and pumps and and, and lights and uh, just loads and loads of stuff and we try to show people how you can just do it really easy it's just a little container some nutrient solution, some seeds, and you can grow some food. So we're, it's kind of like a gorilla gardening kind of thing. Let's see. I requested my link to join. Thank you for the link. Hey, cool. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Jeff, for putting that in there. Um, either my wife will do it or, or I'll get it later and I'll, I'll pop you in there. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I get you. Let's see. 
I feel like anything starting, yeah, yeah, starting, yeah, it's always, always uh, uh, stressful like that. So that's what I do on my channel is just that, you know, you can start up and, and it doesn't cost that much money if you, I actually did it in like those little mail cartons. I've done it in, in different things because uh, I don't know if you guys have been following me for years, but when I first started, um, I went out, put some videos and I was sharing them with some groups. Dude, we'll check, definitely. Yeah, yeah, cool. And if you have any questions, I mean, you know where to find me. You send me around the internet. Just ask, ask some questions. We'll pop on a private live if you need to, but we'll talk a little bit. And uh, I'll, I'll check out your, I, I know your channel. I'll see if you got a um, address. And uh, I'm I'm running like a buy one, get one free sale right now. So I'm act, out there cutting and making a bunch of them. I might have like some spares laying around or, or some might be a little shorter or something I can't sell. I'll like ship something to you you can try something out like just uh, experimenting be kind of cool but uh yeah i tried to do things as cheap and easy as possible because i was i was sharing it with like some groups and one was um i used to be with like some vegan groups or vegetarian and and uh one of them was like what broke ass vegans eat or something and so i thought well, well this can help you know you grow your own food because this stuff i don't know if you guys price microgreens over here in the states um small little container with a couple of ounces like about eight bucks you know because they don't sell them, like the health food stores and everything what's that beside you this one it's broccoli it's called microgreens you look it up that's got like it's supposed to be like 40 times the the nutrients of the uh, regular broccoli so if you eat broccoli and it's healthy this is a lot more healthy for you um these are pea shoots kind of look like that got little tendrils i don't know if you knew that you could actually eat you know, before it grows peas, the tender little shoots come out. That's the newest thing in like the high end chefs. They like that. And sunflower sprouts. So if you like sunflower seeds, you can grow some sunflower sprouts. Those are awesome. Can you use bulk sunflower seeds from the store? I don't know. You can try it. I've heard a lot of different varying uh, opinions on that. Some people do. You won't get like as much. The, the germination rate won't be near as much, but you buy so much of it. You know, if you don't mind it not, you know, being like full like that, you know, you might be spotty. If you're just looking for food, you can try it. Then I heard some things about some of them were treated, you know, but they're feeding them to birds. So I don't know what they would treat them with, uh, but it's kind of hit and miss, Jeff. Brandon, Mike is king. No, Pepe's the king. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just. Uh, I'm a little humble guy trying to help some people. Pepe's the king. Watch it. Watch him. He's helping me grow cat. Oh, watercress now and and that selling hordes. Awesome. You know, Pepe, I'm still trying that. You 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 got it. You say I, I taught you. I bought some watercress seeds, and I tried it, and uh. And uh, mine didn't make it, so I got. I'm gonna try it again. But watercress must be one of the most healthy. I think second or even ahead of um, uh, broccoli. So uh, I, I definitely want to try watercress again. And, and you're doing it. And uh, so I, I gotta give. I might have to call you for some advice. Have to get ready for live. Hey, no problem. Appreciate you stopping by, man. Like I said, if you ever want to talk, just hit me up. Thank you for everything. I'll catch you later. Yeah, awesome. Appreciate it. I check out your channel too there. Appreciate you stopping in. Um, but yeah, what I was saying um, about, you know, the reason why I try to do it as cheap and easy is uh, I was sharing it with this group and it was like what pro vegans eat and, and somebody jumped on and said, I hate when people come on at some place where we're supposed to be broke and they, they show all this expensive stuff. And I was like, well, I'm trying to do it, you know, cheap. I, you know, so I didn't mean anything by it. And she was talking about my greenhouse. Like everyone can't put up a greenhouse. I'm like, well, I didn't pay for much for that. That was actually one of those little car, um, you know, the little portable carports you put up. I used that for the frame and I went and bought, I didn't use greenhouse plastic. I just went and bought six mil plastic from the store and wrapped it with it and, and screwed it on with some old two by fours I had. So I didn't really spend, you know, but they didn't, I put it together. It looked really cool. So they didn't really know that it was just kind of half ass done and that all the other stuff I tried to do cheap. So I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I really was trying to help. And then from that point on, I, I went even further trying to make it as cheap as, as, as so everybody could do. And that's why I use like recycled milk containers and, and, and the pool noodles. 
where you can get the inserts for hydroponics. Those things cost like 25, 50, 75 cent a piece up to a couple bucks. It depends on how big they are. And when you cut up a pool noodle, basically the same stuff, it comes out to two cents a piece. And the only reason why I did it was because I was trying to show people, trying, trying to figure out a way to, that almost anyone can do it because you know, that it's empowering to grow your own food. You know, we only have a couple of basic necessities in life, right? Air, you got to breathe, right? Water, you know, we kind of depend on somebody else for, for your water unless you live near a stream and food. And basically our, our things that we depend on for life, you know, you don't need movies. You don't need, you know, certain things, you know, shelter you need, but um, we depend on other people for it. So when you learn to grow some of your food, that's empowering. You're actually taking back part of your life. You're you, part of your independence, you know, and that's why, you know, I kind of like some of the, you know, preppers and everything too, because, you know, they're always like, you know, what if shit does hit the fan? You're like, well, you know, at least I know how to, you know, I'll be able to get by, you know, I won't have to worry about food too much because I'll be able to grow some, you know, and then if you know how to hunt, you know how to do this and that, but um, it, it's empowering. So, I wanted everyone to know, even though you're not going to go out there and you might not do it, it's good information to have in the back of your mind, you know, that, that, you know, one day if something does happen or, or I knew a lot of people are just working to make ends meet that they work paycheck to paycheck and a major portion of their money goes to food. And when inflation hits and something happens and like the cost of produce goes out the roof, you know, they can't afford it, you know, and then we're all eating just, processed cereal and bread and, and stuff. So if you can go out for a couple of pennies and grow something, you know, that's, that's what my goal was, was because even a traditional garden, you guys know that you, you think spring's coming. I'm going to plant my garden. You know that you don't, don't just go out there and grab some seed and just throw it out there. You think about a whole lot of stuff to, that goes into it and then probably spend a whole lot of money each time. So I'm trying to figure out ways that, anybody anywhere can kind of do it so you know what I'm, i've also got if i can find this if i if i find it i'll pop it up and i'll just tell y'all i live streamed last night and someone popped on and said thank you you know she she learned a lot from uh, watching some of these videos but she said her mom went back to her her grandma i think went back to ecuador and she helped her grandma set up a farm and it's feeding like everyone in the community for free just from the stuff that they learned. And it's so, you know, to me, that's, you know, that that's, that's cool. You know, when we get old and gray, like I said, you look at back at life and you look at how much money you made or how much, how, how big your house is or, or how much shit you, you collected, but stories like that, you know, that, that we shared stuff and help empower other people. I mean, those stories, those stories don't go away. Those are kind of priceless. So um, that that kind of stuff, you know, I love it. And that's what I love all of you. When you guys share, like some people, you know, I run these little sales. Like I said, I hope I don't sound sales and, you know, coming on and, and saying buy one, get one free. And and if you buy this, you know, we, we all got to make money. You know, we got to eat. If you can't grow your food, you know, we still got to eat. You got to pay your light bill. You, you got bills to pay. Um, but, you know, so so I do that. But But the thing that really gets me off, even more than that is when I hear these stories come in and I, I would never hear those stories if it wasn't for people like you two to take it and you share it with other people because some of them came back and said, Hey, I saw you in some Facebook group that I've never heard of, you know, so, and, but I know this cause somebody took it and shared it, you know, like you push share and they shared it and then somebody else hit share and it goes through so many people and you don't really know who, you know, and then somebody all of a sudden sees something and doesn't says, thank you. And I'm like, cool. Who are you? You know, so, but, but that's actually cool. And that, that's what gets me off is that my wife, uh, some, you know, we talk about, uh, her painting mural. She's a muralist and we, we try to find kids, you know, in our time when we don't, you know, we don't have a lot of spare time, but when we have some downtime, if we find somebody that's in need, um, she paints them a mural like on canvas now and we just mail it to them over Christmas. Uh, you know, when you go into church, and they have the trees and they have like the secret Santa and, and for kids in need. And I went up and just grabbed a, a boy and a girl. And I came home and just asked her, I said, these, these kids need something. 
and one said anything superhero and the other one said a uh, youtube star uh jojo siwa or something i didn't know who that was we had to look it up so my wife went over and we're going to do a video for her put up on her channel kind of share with people and she painted a, a mural with like this girl and and all the stuff that she you know is associated with her it was a cool little collage and a superhero thing i went out and bought all those um stickers um marvel stickers that you know you peel them off and stick them on the wall and she painted a cityscape it looked like a a, a city so that he had something to pull them off instead of just putting them on your wall and he had like a city backdrop and you could pull the superheroes off and put it on and we took those and rolled them up and wrapped them up you don't stick your name or anything on it nobody knows who you are and you go back and put it under the tree and at christmas morning that goes out to some kid somewhere i have no idea who they were you know just said you know first name of what they wanted so you do things like that and that's giving you know i'm not like saying like everyone needs to do it, but that's something we do because when you get feeling like that you know you've helped somebody somebody smiled somebody you know enjoyed it then uh, those are memories and those are things that, that really make you feel good and then all this other stuff you know like when I don't know if a, a lot of you are YouTube creators or life or whatever happens. You get a lot of stuff that bothers you. You get a lot of things like that going on. You get a little perspective in life. You know, there's a, you know, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, you may feel like you're need help or, or you're beat down in that. But there's there's a lot of people out there worse off than you. And that, you know, we all should be grateful, you know, to be alive and, and to be able to help other people. You know that, that you know those are things that are priceless and i hope hope some of you guys can you know just experience that kind of stuff um that's why my wife started a channel room for you we're gonna you know share some of those stories and that and give people the opportunity to get on in on it because uh before the internet uh, we would just do people local around where we live and we uh, actually when they went in like for a doctor uh, visit or, or like a hospital staying they were stuck in there for days then they knew when they got back home that they'd be in there for like weeks or months you know in the room so when they went in we'd go in and make over the room I'd, I'd do the handy stuff and build stuff for them and my wife would paint up the room the walls and then we'd leave and not, not charge them anything and then when that kid got home when they came home they're feeling real crappy they went through all kinds of stuff at the hospital and then they're going to be stuck home and then they get home and the room's redone you know that's just you know just thinking you, you've done something like that we love that and that's why we want to start a channel because now with the internet um i can't build things you know i can't be there but she paints them on canvas and we just ship them off to them and then they can just staple it up or put up wallpaper paste and just stick them on there and uh, now we're we're helping people like farther out you know it's around the united states if we had the money we could send it overseas but you know that costs a lot but sooner or later we want to hope you know that we can build it big enough where we've got enough coming in and we can we can do things like that but um i hope people don't mind i, I don't know what you all think about it if i you know that's why i said this even a year back it's called keep on growing you know this is teaching people how to just grow things it's not just a gardening channel and that's the reason why we grow things cheap and easy is trying to teach everyone, you know, trying to empower everyone. It's not just for people that can afford it. Um, it, it it's trying to empower everybody and, and help people all over the world. And now with the internet, you know, so my wife does that and we really enjoy doing it. You know, I enjoy growing and I enjoy showing it with y'all and I get a little, you know, satisfaction. If somebody says, Hey, I grew some food too. You know, that feels real good to me. But when you help like some kid that's like way off worse than you, and, and you just, you know, that makes you feel good. You know, we want to do more of that too. I'm, you know, I might share some of that on this channel and YouTube says you shouldn't do it. You know, and people, you know, what I got 20 some odd thousand subscribers or something, you know, they might come back and think they're going to see a growing thing and we might be sharing something about a mural. Uh, I don't know, you know, are they just going to unsubscribe and leave, but we got to do what we want. We got to do, you know, I'm, I'm 50 something years old. If I was 20 and, you know could do a bunch of different things you know I, in different channels i would but you know this channel is about who i am and i hope some of you guys can understand that we might be putting some of that other stuff in and i don't care if it doesn't get four thousand views or ten thousand or twenty thousand views if 30 people watch it and, and it touches people like it touched me then that's worth it so 
you know, I might might be sticking some of them here and some of them there, you know, because there's more chance of people seeing it, you know, over here with the number of, uh, of subscribers I have here. But we're going to be doing that. And then people have been asking me about like recipes too. I used to do recipes, so it, I might be changing it up a little bit. But I'll always be here if anybody's got questions, you know, how to do this. You know, that's part of it too, showing people how to grow their own food. So we might be mixing other things in, but um, I want to get back to that message because I, this last year, I really got into the YouTube thing and and they're trying to tell you to do your channel a certain way and don't do this and don't do that and then stick to your topic and blah, blah, blah. And I got real technical. If some of you guys have seen some of my videos from a few years back, you notice that I put like funny things in it. You know, I like filming. I like storytelling. Um, I, I did a bunch of crazy stuff and I put it in there. And, you know, and then the last year I kind of stopped it a little bit because I was trying to, you know, do the tags, do your title, do your description, because I was trying to help other creators who were trying to grow their channel. And I couldn't tell them just, just be wacky, just do whatever. So I had to kind of walk the walk when I was teaching them. And I kind of got away from all of that and, and, and got really bored, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Um, for sure, helping others make sense of life is a meaning. Yeah. And Mike and Keely, I can see this in both of you. The moment I found your channel never changed. Cool. Roll needs more of it. Appreciate that, Pepe. So it's, you know, you got to decide, you know, do I just want a YouTube channel? You know, do I just want people to watch me for, you know, do I want to be the plant man? You know, do I want to be Mike Van Dusen? So uh, we're going to be getting into more of that, like I said. So, you know, uh, I hope people don't mind. You know, I'll pop some on if they do. If not, you know, she's got another channel she's going to be um, putting that on too. But as you all know, you know, we've got that applaud, you know, feature here and all the channels don't have it yet. That's why I thought if we start doing it on here, you know, if people want to help out with stuff like that. You know, I have more options with this channel than I do with a brand new channel. And starting with a brand new channel, I'd just be starting all over. And, then, and it might take another three years to get to the point, you know, to this point. And um, I think of all the people that we could help in the meantime in those three years, you know, instead of trying to, you know, grow the channel is just that we've got one already grown. Why don't we just get out and start helping people and, and move on from there? So uh, if, if you all see other things, you know, please forgive me. You know, like I said, it's, it's just uh, me being me. And um, what do you call it? I'll always be here about the plants and that, but I, I don't want to, that to define my life. As I'm getting older, I don't want to be just the plant man. I got so much other stuff to do, and I want to share it with everyone because I think I think it can help help other people, and and I think you'd enjoy it. So, uh, what time is it? Wow, I was been on over an hour. I right. appreciate y'all stopping in. Y'all got any questions? That pop them in the chat. I, I kind of went off on a tangent there, but we're talking about all the the microgreens. Pepe's in the channel john and love your channel cool appreciate it appreciate you stopping in john and uh anybody else who's out there in the chat you know everybody just say hey or give a thumbs up out there let me know who's out there but uh uh i'm going to be live streaming tomorrow too so i'm, I'm not going to keep you all too long tonight i'm going to pop on like i said i'm going to give everybody a chance to get these down spouts you know not a, a, everyone can like see this live stream or the last one sunday i'm going to do morning or night or something and pop on and talk a little bit more but I'm going to give everybody a chance to get those. And like I said, if you get them and you plant your stuff out, take pictures, send them to me. I'm going to start putting pictures up here, start sharing what people have done. And let me know that it's okay to share your pictures or whatever if, if you're in it. Lots of people send me a picture of just their, you know, their stuff that they have. And I'll put those pictures up. But if you're in the picture, you got to let me know that it's okay to uh, put you on there or else I just cut it off. But I want to start sharing that with everybody too. Let's see. One day I will join you on the show. Cool. I'm not sure if it works with my Mac. Um, yeah, uh, it's called just try StreamYard uh, right up here. And go on there and then it's real easy to hook up, Jeff, and just do it. You can actually call if you got a phone, too. You can send the invite code like I did email to your phone. And just try it or, or just tell me one day and we'll, we'll try. Well, you wanted to talk one day. Just let me know about editing and uh, I'll send you a code and then you'll see how it works. But uh, real cool, it, it, people, uh, Chrome, I think if you can use a Chrome browser on the Mac, it'll work. Tangents are great. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I came on and was talking about that and microgreens, and then I got talking about everything else. But 
but uh, um, sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead. We're going to harvest some of this. I might leave some of it. I got to harvest that tonight, but these other ones I'll leave out. I'll be on a live stream tomorrow. So you guys, if you came by, David Gilston, love your channel, looking at your Etsy shop. Cool. Do you sell longer garden downspouts? Um, I, I can. Uh, there's a lots of people who've asked. The reason why I sell 30 inches is because I can get a uh, 10 foot section is 120. I can cut it into four pieces. And the math all just came out that it, uh, I could find, I found a 32 inch box that fit just right. And if I made it smaller, you know, I could get five, but then they get one less hole in it. Is I, I just think that was like a perfect size. But if I go a little bigger, when you mail things, um, if it goes over 48 inches, then some of it you have to go by freight or truck instead of the post office. And then shipping just goes, you know, out the roof. Or if you do it at the post office, the postage like doubles or triples just for going up that couple of inches. So what can happen is if you need them a little bit bigger, you can ask me what I'll do is you tell me how many you need and I'll estimate how big the box is and then I'll estimate the weight with the, the downspouts that I have. And then I'll have to input that and it'll spit out an estimate. You know, I don't just come up with like the postage. Um, so you have to tell me how many and how big you want it, and then I'll go ahead and punch a punch a, all the figures in and try to calculate it. But I can tell you, there's been several people that asked me, and I put it in, and postage went from ten to fifteen dollars for the thirty-inch ones, and it shot up to like sixty bucks or something. And it was, you know, if you got the money to pay for postage, and you don't mind, but you know, most of the time I did that, and they're like, whoa, okay, I'll I'll get the thirty-inch one or whatever. So that's why I did that was that, that, you know, I could get four of them out of each section. And then, and, and that was a one that was manageable to, to ship at a decent uh, postage. Um, you know, I didn't want it to get too expensive, like 50 bucks for a, a downspout. Um, you do get the, the inserts. I put the little pool noodles, you know, and it, those are just for you to get started. If you guys have a Dollar Tree or Walmart, whatever around your Amazon, you can get your own pool noodles and cut them up, come out like two cents a piece. But I, I toss some of those in there and then I toss some nutrients in so that you can make uh, five gallons of nutrient solution. So I'll fill up one of those containers, like I think it takes about a gallon to fill up that 30 inch section. So I'll fill it up about five times. Um, so it, it, it gets you off to a pretty good start and then you can experiment see if you like it. But yeah, if it, like I said, just, uh, just DM me or, or hit me up somewhere and ask me if you do want one a little bigger and I'll try to figure it out. But, but, most of the time it came out, it was it's pretty cost prohibitive. Prohibitive. Alrighty, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pop on. If you guys see me popping on tomorrow, if you just want to pop on and say hey, you can. But I'll basically be going over the same stuff, uh, you know, with the downspouts and um, doing the eBooks. If anybody's just popped in here, I'm gonna start. Uh, I tried to call in. It was I got a lot of feedback, but. Uh, I'm offering a free consultation, like 15 to 30 minutes, where we can talk face to face, or if you just want to just call. Um, if you buy the ebook from the uh, Etsy shop, you know it's only five bucks. But as part of that, instead of just getting the ebook, lots of people have questions too. Like they'll order the ebook, and then I'll get questions right away. I was figuring you get the ebook, you read through it, and then we can do a little phone call. That way, even if you know I'm not to where I can. I'm not good at answering an email. I'm just going to say I probably, if you've emailed me, I probably haven't got back. I, it's, I'm like three or four months behind on it. You won't believe this, but people will email me and I'll open up and be like pages of, of questions, you know, and then and, and long stories and then question and long story, you know, and it takes forever to get through them. Uh, so I figured, hey, if they buy the ebook and then they have questions, we'll do a little face to face consultation and we'll talk 15, 30 minutes. Usually we can hash out everything that. And then I get to know some of y'all. That's what I like said. I want to start making connections, and because right now I just see names, little icons, and and I thought that that'd be a neat little way. You know, they buy that, and then I go ahead and send them a little code, and then we could have a little face to face, and and slowly, you know, we can all get to know each other a little better. That's what life's all about, right? Um, but yeah, I'm gonna do that. So if you see me on the next couple of days, I'm gonna be talking about that, kind of explaining it to people, because a lot of people just watch YouTube. Some people don't know about like the live streaming and the different things we can do. And I want to explain that to them and tell them, you know, give everyone a chance to 
get the downspouts if they want because once spring starts um, and I'm working, I'm going to be spending all my time in the garden filming, making videos, and I'm not going to have any time to build them. So right now, before you know, some of these to have snow, right now when we have a little bit of downtime, and uh, not to make everyone jealous, but the weather down here in Florida is like really pleasant outside right now. You know, it's cool, it's not hot, and I can spend the day outside and, and make a bunch of downspouts, you know, so I can have a little fun and do that. So I want to give everybody a chance because once spring gets here and these guys start going into downspouts and we start growing stuff, I'm going to be filming, it takes time to edit videos, um, and then you got to work and make money. So I got to get back to work and everything too. So uh, give them all a chance before, before that happens to get their downspouts ready. Everybody get those, get your microgreens growing. And plant them out. I want to see what you're growing. Take pictures. Oh, Jeff, if you scroll back up, he put the link to the um, Facebook group, and there's about a thousand people in there, I think. So if you want to want to jump over there, like I said, I'm really busy doing all of this stuff. I pop in there once in a while, but if you ask a question, me or my wife, sometimes I try to answer it. But the other guys, Jeff's in there all the time. Uh, Chris, who was in here, and they answer each other's questions. There's some guy, David Charis, who does growing like this he loves answering questions uh matt garver a uh, lot uh, cb uh pops in there all the time and whenever he posts a video he pops it in there too so uh tons of people with with knowledge in that are in that group so y'all join that group thanks jeff for popping that in there y'all join that group my wife will let you in and you got questions lots of people over there don't mind helping you know that that's what it's all about i saw helping each other and um what do you call it? Whenever you guys grow something and you want to share it, you know, pop it in there. You know, we love seeing that. Everybody help cheer each other on. So, and if you learn to do something like if you, you figured something out like this, like the three slits here and the three wicks instead of two, put that in there and share it with everybody. You know, like I said, all this, this, uh, it's kind of like, what's it called? Um, open, open, open source experimenting or something like that where somebody takes a problem, puts it out on the internet, and everybody tries to figure it out, like the uh, window farms. I don't know if you all saw that, kind of like hydroponics that are hanging in the windows. They just put that out there, and people tried it all different ways. I kind of like that, too. Uh, let's see. Where can I get bok choy seeds? Um, you can look on Amazon. Uh, Johnny Seeds, I think. The ones that I use was called, I think, the Sea Show. It's either S-H-I... Let's see, S I S H O, not Shiro. That was the the purple looking plant. But um, I'll get with you, John. I think I think it was a seashell variety because I like it because it doesn't form a head of bok choy. It's kind of hard to grow in the cracking method. This one kind of grows like it's real white stems, big and thick, and a round, really really luscious uh, leaf. And I like that because you can pop those off and you can break off the bottom leaves and it keeps growing until it bolts. And when you chop it up, and actually I got to make some videos when I grow some more bok choy. Somebody just asked me about that yet. Glad you reminded me. But when you chop it up, the green part, I take hot soup and just drop it in. I don't even cook it. Drop it in and it wilts like spinach. And then the white part is crunchy. You know, you chop that up. So you get these two different textures from that one plant. You chop it up. Kind of like, you know, regular bok choy. They cut it up and they put it in um, uh, stir fries and things like that. When you go to the store, you ever notice the bok choy, like it's got the stems, but then all the top's all wilted. You grow your own, and it's not wilted. It's it's like fresh, and you, you pick it at the time you need it. You cut it up and just drop it in that stuff, and you put in your salads. Um, it, it's awesome. I, I love it. And uh, was it last? No, the video hasn't come out. See, I've got to edit some videos. But all of that bok choy you guys have seen me growing over the years, all the videos, you go back and you keep clicking back and looking at different videos they all came from one plant and that's what i was talking about i was going to get all these pictures together anybody's ordered the ebook too i said that future updates will all be free you know it's not like i'm i'm going to sell you like one ebook and go hey here's volume two here's volume three or here's volume four and it's 99.99 or whatever that one ebook is it that once i see your email and you bought that i give you all the free updates whenever i make them everybody gets them and and you can take those too and friggin' share them with everybody if you want, uh, or sell it if you want. I don't care. You know, you can take my ebook and and sell it as a PDF to somebody else. 
you know, as long as everybody learns how to grow. Um, but uh, all of that stuff that you see me growing came from that first crop. I'm going to get those old pictures. It's crappy camera, so it's crappy pictures, but it shows how I was experimenting. And I let a crop go to seed. And I saved all the seed and I have them in a can. And that's what I have been using all this time. Just that one crop I got from one packet of seeds that I bought from the store. It just happened to be the variety. You know, I love that variety. Save the seeds and I've been using it ever since. And every year I let all these go to seed. And I'm going to do a video how to get them and, and save the seed. And I use some of those, but I still have that original can with some of those that, that you know, it doesn't take very much. It's like these broccoli seeds. You know, it takes about 10 grams to get like this much broccoli, right? And then look, that's like one plant right there. So imagine how many plants are right here, you know, thousands of plants. Um, so uh, I saved that pop choice. So once you, you find it, grow it, let some go to seed, start saving those seeds, and you never have to buy seeds again um, off the pop choice. That, that, that was so easy. Uh, what do you call it? So I've got one, two, three. Yeah, it's been about six years. So I don't know if they're still good. You can, I, don't, I don't know how long you can keep them. They're in like a little airtight container. But uh, I'm going to get those pictures together and start sharing with everybody too. So that's cool. All right. I keep running my mouth. I keep saying I'm going to get off. I'll be on tomorrow, guys, you know, if you want to pop on. I, I don't know what time. So if uh, if you're subscribed and you – I don't know if you guys know much about YouTube, but there's a little bell down there. you got to click it. Otherwise, they won't put out a notification. Um, and you just kind of keep an eye out. And if you miss a live, you can watch it on the, you know, replay. But if you want to pop in and say, hey, or you got a question, you know, stop in tomorrow. Or if you know some friends that might want to learn a bit, uh, a little bit about off-grid hydroponics or a little bit about life, you know, just pop in here and have some fun. So I hope you guys have a great weekend. Uh, just started. We got tomorrow. Everybody enjoy their Sunday. If I don't see you, you know, we'll see you throughout the week or whatever, and I'm going to have some videos coming out. I've got, like I said, I'm going to have one about microgreens, that wick, and have one about um, saving the seeds, and, and there's several coming, but uh, I thought this was just a lot quicker popping on here, and I get to talk with you guys a little bit, which, you know, I kind of miss. We, we get a little bit of a connection. Me just making videos is kind of lonely. We're just, you know, just me shooting it. I'm sitting at my desk editing and upload, and then I answer a couple comments. I love this, just getting in here and mixing it up with you guys. So uh, some of you get brave. I want you to come on the show with me like Pepe did, you know, like an interview and show us what you're growing. We'll do some during the day or uh, during the morning, you know, so it's light outside and y'all pop on here and you can take your phone and go around your garden and, and show off your garden on the show here. So we're going to we're going to be getting into that baby steps. But for right now, like I said, we got a little free time. We're going to be making downspouts. We're going to get everybody growing. And then we'll get on and, and connect with each other. So appreciate y'all. Uh, it takes me a little while to shut this down. So it's uh, a little awkward when I say bye. Then I'm still here punching buttons and everything. But as always, lift, inspire, and keep on growing. We'll catch y'all later.